Chapter 5 Call now, if there be any that will answer thee, and to which of the saints wilt thou turn? For wrath killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. I have seen the foolish taking root, but suddenly I cursed his habitation. His children are far from safety, and they are crushed in the gate, neither is there any to deliver them. Whose harvest the hungry eateth up, and taketh it even out of the thorns, and the robber swalloweth up their substance. Although affliction cometh not forth of the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground. Yet man is born unto trouble, as the sparks fly upward. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause, which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number, who giveth rain upon the earth, and sendeth waters upon the fields, to set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. He disappointeth the devices of the crafty, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taketh the wise into in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime, and grope in the noonday as in the night. But he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. So the poor hath hope, and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. For he maketh sore, and bindeth up, and woundeth, and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, seven. There shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt, shalt visit thy habitation, and shalt not sin. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thy offspring as the grass of the earth. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like as a shock of corn cometh in his season. Lo this! We have searched it, so it is. Hear it, and know thou it, for thy good. Now this, got to remember now, we're, we're dealing with Hebrew poetry. And though it is poetry, it's different than the kind of poetry that we think of as poetry. A lot of times we don't understand that our way of communicating is in the Greek tradition, which is the logic and the direct comparison. And we would say, for instance, that God is powerful, or God is all-wise, and God is knowing. But to the Hebrew, that kind of comparison seems inadequate. They would say, God is my shepherd they would use images of things to describe things. And this is what happens in the Hebrew poetry. And what is happening here is this man is telling Job that God is trying to reach out to him to correct him. And if he, if he allows it to enter his heart, if he allows himself to be corrected, then God will heal him and make him whole, and everything is wonderful. Then, of course, what we don't see is, as this guy is prattling on and on and on, is that Job has to be thinking in his own mind, but I was righteous, but I didn't do anything to hurt anybody else, but I did what was right, I did what was honest, I followed all the commandments, and the point is that Job's friends, quote, friends, uh, are not really Job's friends. They are people who are looking at him as though he was them. And Job isn't them. Job wasn't partly righteous. Job isn't condemning anybody else. Job was just living as righteously as he knew how. 
and these things came upon him as part of the literary device of the story to teach people that his righteousness was not a guarantee of immunity from trouble. As that's the case for all of us, no matter how righteous we are. Things can happen to us. We can get cancer, have heart attacks, have problems with family. All of those things can happen to us. What matters in the long run is how we handle it, what we learn from it, and whether or not we understand that it isn't a condemnation of us to the extent that we do not cause those things. If we do cause them, then it's a consequence of how we're living. But if we don't cause them, and we try to solve them, and we try to do the best we can, that's all Heavenly Father expects of us, is to do the very best we can. But he does expect the very best. And he also understands that some of our friends may come to us and think, gee, if you weren't so rotten, you wouldn't have such a tough time. And we get to learn some patience by tolerating their attitudes towards us. And maybe in the long run, they learn not to judge by seeing to it that learning in the long run, Heavenly Father will make it all right for us. And that in fact, it wasn't a trial, it wasn't anything deliberate, but it was a lesson we needed to learn, and we learned it by the things that happen on this earth.